So Kat's the design director at Frog and heads up the design practice in the San Francisco studio. She's a passionate teacher of design, serving as a guest faculty for the University of Washington Master of Humans Computer Interaction and Design Department, and led and designed the first UX course for General Assembly. When she's not designing, she moonlight, moonlights as an improvisational comedian and really excited to see those skills at work in her talk. So please <laughs> welcome Kat. Thanks for that introduction. I feel like there's a little pressure to be funny, but um, I don't know if you guys have all been on Zoom. It's pretty hard to be funny on Zoom uh, and, and kind of live because there's no feedback from the audience. So hopefully Jen and Pri will, will be laughing. Um, yeah, I want to talk today about design systems in practice in our organization. Um, as mentioned, uh, I'm a design director at Frog in the San Francisco studio, and I've had the pleasure of working on tons of design systems with clients, everything from taking a design system and building it out and theming it across different brands to building a design system that is going across mobile and kiosk and a button extension and desktop web, um, all of those kind of different, different uh, ways to kind of implement a design system. Uh, feel free to reach out if you want to chat more about this on Twitter. Um, and let's get into the talk we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how we create, launch, and successfully maintain design systems in our organization. Clearly a huge topic. There's a lot to cover. So what I'm going to try to do today is talk about some of the, the learnings that I've had, give you some uh, tools that you can use as well, how I think about it, um, and then capture the slides um, and, and I've put some questions on there that you can dig into and think about later as well. Um, level set, you're here because you care about design systems, but just as we think about it, uh, there's huge benefits to them, quicker product development, better internal processes and better user experience when we embed kind of those best practices in the fundamental atoms of our design system. Um, and what is a design system? I know there's been some talks about this uh, and panels around this um, previously today. When we think about a design system, I think a lot of people come into this mindset that it is sort of the style guide. Um, maybe it's some of the components built out. Maybe those are documented. But when we think about the design system and launching it in our organizations, it's really important that we consider not only just these foundational styles and components uh, that go across different platforms, but we really consider what's the system in which that design language system is living in the larger system. Um, so thinking about the tools, the, the guidance, the government governance, the workflows, everything around making a design language system come out into the market. Um, one of the things that helps me when I think about building design systems is to think about the, the two audiences. There's the external customer, which our design system as we build it out and the design language system impacts those external customers. And there's the service that's provided for our teammates. So I actually like to borrow a concept from service design and think about the design system with this front stage and this backstage. So the front stage is everything that our customer interacts with. So this is everything from how we design a component and how that interaction pattern is to the visual style. Uh, and we need to think about building our design system in a way that, that meets their needs. And then there's the, the backstage, which is all the organization tools and processes of our design system that really make that front stage come to life and be real. So I think it's, it's, it's important that you think about both of those things as you're building out your design system. And what I wanna go over today is the steps to launching a design system um, in your organization. And we need to think about the external customer and the internal customer across all these stages. So we're gonna talk about analysis, foundation, pilot and implementation, all getting to the launch of our system. So let's start with the first phase, analysis. This phase is all about establishing your goals and setting your team up for success. Um, a quick note on, uh, on this phase, what teams typically look like when uh, we're launching a design system. Uh, when we're, we're establishing a new system or creating a system, it's usually two to four designers, um, usually more senior designers, uh, and um, kind of really spearheading an effort because there's a lot of ambiguity in this. There's a lot of synthesis of a lot of different touch points, typically, if you're working across uh, a, a legacy product. And then there's the maintaining. And one just note here is that 
it's really it's really cool organizations that have a rotating schedule in, in they're maintaining their design systems. So you have product, you have people working 50% on product or 50% on design systems, or a rotating two or three months working on the design system itself. Uh, so that way you Im kind of imbue the design system in your organization more organically um, than just having one centralized team. But uh, there's different models for it. Um, really important phase is customer research. Any good design process starts with customer research. Um, but uh, I think this is a really, it's really good to bake into your design system, uh, not only just here's components, but what is the user research that we're rallying around as an organization? Uh, and also you're gonna be making decisions as you build out your design system for which components to use and when. Um, so recently we were on a project building out a design system and uh, during our user research, we found that people were switching when they were about to buy something from mobile to desktop because they trusted it more. And so we started to look at what are the components or what is causing that trust so that we can bake the trust of the sort of desktop experience into the entire design system. Um, so s s things like that um, are really important as you're making decisions and building out your design system. Um, every good project starts with a kickoff um, and establishing your goals. Uh, but I think uh, what I wanted to share with you on this was uh, an activity that we do that's really fun and also brings a lot of people together is that we'll audit uh, a lot of different design systems that are out in the world, uh, look at their principles, look at what are some core components that they have, um, how have they built out their, their, uh, their IA of their design language system, um, and looking at all that, and then auditing that, uh, thought voting, and then talking about how do we want our design system as an organization to look and feel? How do we want it? How do we want the ways that we're working that we're kind of putting into this system to, to manifest in the world? So that's a fun activity, uh, brings people together and solicits good conversation. Um, next piece is choosing your tool set. Tons of great tools out there. Um, and I think when you're building your design system, this is a great time to really think about what tools you're using because it will you are thinking not only about the tools that you're designing with or developing with, but also the workflow and the communication. And you can eliminate some of those pain points in your communication or how you're working together by choosing the right tools. Um, lots of trade-offs here, thinking about the cost to your organization, things that people are already familiar with using. You might be able to get quicker buy-in if you're using things that are, people are familiar with. But this is just definitely one thing you want to do as you're building out your design system is look at your tools. Um, and then the last thing in analysis is really thinking about your roadmap and starting to think about what you're going to be building out. Um, so we try to do stuff pretty uh, analog at first. So you'll see in the background on that, the right side is just a DLS board where we're like, Here, here's what we think the components are. And we're kind of get together of what we think the first components we're going to need to, to get building are. Um, here's what we think the foundational structure might look of our language system. Um, and and kind of getting that already started thinking about because you you might have some a lot of tech implications to that or, or thinking about um, how does that fit in with our other product roadmap the design system roadmap so starting to have those conversations early is always better. Next phase is the foundational phase. This is the fun phase for me. <laughs> um, this is when you're getting into the nitty gritty of design and engineering for building out your design system. So lots of times when you're building out uh, the design system, inevitably, as you're bringing together different platforms or different products, they probably feel a little bit different. They probably look a, bit, a little bit different. It's the whole point of kind of making this design system. You might have, you know, 10 different button types. Um, you're going to have to do a visual refresh at least. And a lot of people want to do a, a rebrand with this effort too. Um, definitely trade-offs there. I think. Uh, if your goal is to launch a design system and get kind of speed to market faster, it's important that this doesn't go off the rails in a full redesign of like, what does all our photography look like? What are our illustrations? What are all our full new icons set? That can like spin out of control and you're not going to get your design system launched. So just realize and help communicate to stakeholders that this is something we're trying to get that sort of MVP out there um, and, and try not to be too far from our current experience so that we can roll this out more uh, iteratively. Um, but we can always update the brand, do this whole rebrand effort after we kind of get the design system in place. So some, something to think about. Um, and then uh, the next phase is sort of reference designs. And this is kind of going in parallel with the visual refresh. 
But this is choosing 15 to 20 different screens that are, uh, and we, so we usually do this, we have 15 to 20 of the screens that have a lot of the components that you want to be designed. So trying to cover like 80% of the components in your system, if you can, um, looking across different platforms. So you'll see um, like, you know, let's let's do, let's do the home screen. Usually one you might want to take into consideration, home screen, maybe a detail page uh, across all the different touch points and starting to decide how do we need to make this component unique um, for that. Uh, one of the things that, that inevitably happens in this, people get excited, they love this this new experience that you're you're putting forward, which is great. Build on that momentum, get buy-in. Um, we typically find we get a lot of extra feedback here uh, about things that people want to do that may be much further down in the roadmap than you can build right now. Capture all of that as a backlog. That's super important for product teams um, that are not in the design system team to be able to kind of build out and build on those requirements and um, these designs will then serve as a reference point for them as they actually start to build these experiences and get the market and pull in all of the actual necessary requirements. Um, next, next piece is really building those components out. So once you have your reference designs, you're able to, to look across and start to uh, build the component in the way that you, that you um, will, will want to kind of build your system out. So thinking about how you want to nest components in your design file, uh, for pooling from foundational files into your groupings of your, your design file, um, how you create your design tokens, which is the variable that is the, the talk between um, design and an eng. Um, so like a color would be a design token variable. Um, and how, you, how do you name those so that that can all work seamlessly together? How do you build an accessibility so that, for instance, when I um, call an image file, if there is no alt tag to it, uh, that that will that will call an error. So how do you like really build build the fundamental building blocks of your system? Um, really important in this phase to think about a racy and establishing a racy because you're going to be making trade offs in this. Um, and one of the things that uh, like on a recent project we had a component that we built out that was supposed to be two um, components stacked side by side, and we ended up uh, having to to kind of put them. Um, to, to not layer them side by side, just because it was going to take a much longer, um, uh, much longer time on the back end to kind of get that rolled out. So a lot of compromises here, but um, really, if you build out this the components in the way that you you want to see them kind of out into the market, you can iterate on this, and this is really important to sort of set that foundation at first. Um, oh, also. Super cool. There's a lot of automated stuff in this as well. So like we've we've been able to go from like a Figma file update of a color all the way out to to code when you and um, do that. So yeah, super super cool stuff here and how you build that. Um, and then the final kind of piece of the foundational phase is making sure that you're documenting um, uh, your design system and creating this single source of truth. Most people documentation makes them want to cry. I get it. Um, but uh, uh, this is also, there's a lot of automation going on here too. So updating things in Figma that are that can show up in something like zero height or um, having storybook integrated in, um, how, being able to look at your documentation in your design file. So there's lots of really cool ways to do this um, and, and really be thinking about also in this phase, how your, uh, your documentation will be updated, who's responsible for that. Um, how do you want to like schedule those release cycles for the documentation? All those things are, are super important. And the better you do this, the, the more likely people are able to, to pick this up and pick up your design system without asking so many questions of, of you. So it's helpful for you in the end too. Um, next phase is our pilot phase. This is all about testing your design system and learning. Um, you're not going to get it right the first time. So uh, really important that you're able to test your workflows. How are, how are design engineering working together? Um, you know, like, are we naming everything right? So like, do you do, you do your linting? Like, how, how's everything working? Uh, what's going wrong? Uh, in a recent pilot, we had uh, trouble kind of onboarding people to our system. And we created these really short two minute videos after the pilot so that people could could kind of get the system better. And that was like a, a really quick learning that we had that really improved um, the, the success of the pilot and the second phase. And then uh, implementation. So this is all about getting your system out to market. 
Um, and this is where it gets it gets um, fun. You want to run a few more pilots, um, but you want to. I think there's kind of two approaches to getting it to market. So one is to focus on one touch point, like mobile, and like let's roll out the entire design system and the mobile experience. Uh, another approach here is to look at different platforms like mobile and web, and um, and say if you have a kiosk, and look at what can we roll out on each of these. Um, kind of incrementally. So let's say maybe the home page, we start with that and do that across. Um, depends really on your technical roadmap, depends on your UX and tech debt, how which approach you choose. But uh, super important that you're you're kind of communicating to your product teams how, how you're planning on rolling out the design system when they can expect to start to use the design system because they're gonna be excited to use it, most likely, hopefully. Hopefully you've done your job throughout the whole process. They've been brought along. Um, and, and they want to be able to know when, when can we use it? When can we help build it maybe? Um, so, so really important there. And then some final thoughts for me on design systems. Some lessons that I've learned is always be flexible because there's going to be trade-offs. There's no right way to build a design system. It's never going to be perfect. You're, it's like an asymptotic curve to, to perf perfection and you're not going to get there. <laughs> um, uh, build partnerships across disciplines and across your organization. Um, establish the right foundation from the start. It's going to be a lot harder if you don't do that. <laughs> um, learn that the hard way. Uh, capture and test your results. Uh, Show metrics. You can look at components and how they're being used in your design system. You can you see how many components have been broken down um, and detached from the master component. Um, so just really using metrics to help learn and what's working, what you might need to update. Um, and be outcome driven. Of course, if it's not getting to market, if it's not helping us ship customer experiences, then what's the point? So make sure we're like going toward that outcome. And then always be thinking about how do you um, treat your design system as a product for your customer and be thinking about those external users and as a service for your teammates, be thinking about them the whole time. And with that, I'll say thank you and open up for any questions. That was awesome, Kat. Thank you so much. That was like a rapid fire, so much useful information. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kat. Uh, that was yeah. that was really amazing. As Jen said, in a short amount of time, you know, got to learn a lot. So thank you so much for that. It was a really Great. informative session. Thank really, you all. Really glad to host you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank Thanks you for having me. Appreciate it.